One question that I get from people who first find my channel is, what can you eat? They say you talk about the need to slash carbs, but what is allowed? Once you get rid of the bread and other starches and you start saying no to sugar and foods with added sugar, what's left? On today's edition of Beat Diabetes, I'll use a trip I took just after Thanksgiving to demonstrate some of the foods you can eat and show you how when you make good choices, your blood sugar is not going to spike much at all. Earlier this fall, our ministry conducted missions in four different African cities, two in Kenya and two in Nigeria. We distributed food and scriptures in each community, and we were especially eager to help the widows, orphans, and those families that had been impoverished by COVID-19. Now, some of you contributed to these missions, and we want to say a great big thank you. Ben and I did a brief video about the missions, and we shared our thoughts about how they went, and we shared some of the pictures and video clips from those missions. To see this video report of our latest African mission to Kenya and Nigeria, you can click on the link in the description below this video. Well, I am proud to be coming to you from the city that inspired that classic song, I'm proud to be an Oki from Muskogee. And I am on my way to see my sister Linda for second Thanksgiving. <laughs> you, if you watch Lord of the Rings, you know that hobbits have first and second breakfast. Well, I had first Thanksgiving yesterday with my wife Benedicta and a couple of my kids and my daughter-in-law and one of my grandkids. And uh, I am going to see my sister and we will have a second Thanksgiving for me, first for her. Now, if you're wondering, where's Benedicta? The answer is, throughout this entire year, Benedicta has been a lot more cautious and a little bit more nervous about the coronavirus atmosphere than I have. And thus, she has stayed home a lot more and I've gone out more. And since a husband's job is to make his wife comfortable, I didn't press the issue and so she stayed home and I went to visit my sister. Okay, well, I thought I'd explain that. Let's go back now to our regularly scheduled program. I always wanted to say that. So I've got to go see Linda. Uh, she doesn't have any other family up there, and she just needs a, a couple of days with her brother. So I've been driving through the great state of Oklahoma. That's You have to go through Oklahoma to get from Texas to Missouri, where I'm going. And it is a long journey. It's pretty much an all-day journey. The scenery is not particularly exciting. And uh, but it's it's nice. I've been listening to Christmas music and uh, having a good time listening to the Christmas music, feeling that Christmas spirit. And uh, it's been good. So for many on a long journey like this, they might think that the biggest deal was keeping their carbs low and trying to find good places to eat where they could manage uh, their low carb diet. Uh, in my case, I don't worry quite so much about that. I've learned how to pretty much manage it in any restaurant, any convenience store. I can always find things that will work for me. Actually, my toughest time on these long journeys, particularly when I'm by myself, is just staying awake. I've always had a little touch of narcolepsy when I was, uh, from the time I was about 20 or so. I just, I have a hard time staying awake sometimes, especially when I drive and especially when I'm by myself. So, uh, so far it's been pretty good, but I do bring along some energy drinks and uh, mix those with a little bit of coffee and that keeps me going, so hopefully I will make it. I'm here at the restaurant that is considered the best restaurant in Muskogee. And it is a Golden Corral and that is a great joy for anybody who's watching their carbs because they have a variety of foods. They have pretty much anything you could want. And so I can pick the low carb stuff and leave off the high carb stuff and I will be good. So I'm going to go in there and see what I can find. I know I'll, uh, I'll be able to find some low carb foods. In fact, Benedict and I have been here a couple of times before on previous trips to Missouri, back when there was no COVID crisis and she'd come with me. So I know I'll find a large selection of foods. I'll wear my mask inside as is the tradition. But as soon as I get in and get seated with my food, I'll take it off. 
Uh, I am blessed that I am traveling through Oklahoma and not California. If I was in California right now, there'd be no restaurants, no, not available for indoor dining, not available for outdoor dining. I guess the best I could do would be to uh, just get some takeout and eat in my car. But I'm not in California. I'm in Oklahoma, <laughs> which is a whole lot nicer for me. So if you'll excuse me, I'm headed for the Golden Corral restaurant to see what I can find and uh, enjoy some good low-carb eating. You may not have a Golden Corral restaurant near you, but most Western nations have similar restaurants. They're called buffet style, and for one price, you can go select your food from many available choices. And if, after eating, you're still hungry, you can just go back again and again. Now, I had neither the time nor the inclination to do that, so I determined I would fill my plate with food, eat that, and be on my way. There are so many choices, the good, the bad, and, well, I won't say the ugly, because actually they all looked pretty great. But I knew there were certain foods I needed to avoid. Worst of all is this area, the dessert section. These sugar-laden foods are nightmares for your blood sugar levels, and I wasn't tempted in the slightest to eat even a small amount of them. Here's another section to avoid, the bread. Bread isn't much better than desserts. It converts into sugar in your stomach lightning fast and drives up glucose. And the only thing a diabetic can say to most bread is, thanks, but no thanks. Here's an area that I knew was safe for me, cauliflower and broccoli. Both of these are low-carb vegetables that have a minimal effect upon my blood sugar. In the end, I settled on four foods to fill up my plate and my stomach cauliflower with a bit of melted cheese on top, green beans, sausage that had been cooked with green peppers, and meatloaf. The meatloaf was the only iffy food of the bunch. Meatloaf can be a bit problematic for two reasons. First, it's made with bread or cracker crumbs mixed in with the meat, and then secondly, it's normally coated with a very thick coating of ketchup. Ketchup is loaded with sugar. And to make matters worse, some people add sugar or brown sugar to the ketchup to make it sweeter still. But this wasn't much of a problem for me. I simply wiped off most, not quite all, but most of the ketchup from the meat. I couldn't do anything about the bread or cracker crumbs, of course, but from previous tests I've done after eating meatloaf, I find this does not jack up my blood sugar much. The other three ingredients green beans, cauliflower, and sausage with green peppers, I knew would not be much of a problem for me. I enjoyed my meal, put my mask back on, left the restaurant, and got back on the highway and headed north. After driving about an hour, I started looking for a place to pull over and test my blood sugar. Now, I like to think I can multitask, but driving a car and testing my blood sugar simultaneously goes beyond my expertise, so I found a Walmart in one of the towns on Highway 69, and I pulled over. Well, I have moved up the road a little bit. It has been about an hour since my finishing of that meal at the Golden Corral in the great city of Muskogee. Now I'm in the town of Pryor, Oklahoma and I'm in a Walmart parking lot. Might seem a strange place to do a blood sugar test, but hey, I've done blood sugar tests all over the place in some of the most unlikely places. So let's find out what Mike Demeter says about that last meal. It's been maybe an hour and 20 minutes or so, uh, probably a little bit past my peak, but it should give me a pretty good idea of how Mike liked that last meal. The moment of truth. What did Mike think about it? Wow, a 94. So, like I said, I may be a little bit past my peak, but uh, I don't think I'm very far past it. So, uh, Mike was okay with me having a little bit of meatloaf along with all those other good low-carb foods. So, it's a Black Friday. I'm tempted to want to go into Walmart and do all kinds of looking around and see what kind of sales they have, but I uh, can't do it. i got to make my way on toward Missouri and to my sister's house. See you later. Now, let me take a few minutes to use this simple meal at a buffet restaurant to talk to you about foods that do not push your blood sugar out of bounds. I chose four foods that clearly worked for me. 
But I have no interest in eating sausage and meatloaf, cauliflower, and green beans every day, every meal for the rest of my life. I may be kind of a dull guy, but I'm not that dull. I like and need a little variety. And there is variety available on a keto or low-carb diet. Now, the reason my meal didn't spike my glucose much at all is that it was made up of two types of foods, meat and low-carb vegetables. I could have eaten this meal a thousand times in a row and it would not raise my glucose much. There's just simply not enough carbs in these foods to tax my metabolic system to the breaking point. Now, a type 1 diabetic would see a, a much greater spike than I would, but a far lesser spike with that meal than if they chose macaroni and cheese and pizza and a great big dessert. But let's get back to my original meal and alter it a bit. Sausage and meatloaf are just two examples of meats that would work for me. I could have chosen steak and roasted chicken instead. Or I could have eaten fish and pit beef. Any meat could have worked as long as it did not have a bread coating and wasn't glazed with honey or some kind of sugary sauce. As for the vegetables, again, there are many vegetables that could have worked. I could have eaten spinach and mushrooms, or cabbage and cucumbers. I could have eaten Brussels sprouts and asparagus. Now, I could go on, but here's a simple way you can figure out which vegetables to eat. Go to Google and type in list of low-carb vegetables, and you'll find lots of choices. Also, you could elect to forego vegetables and instead have nuts and cheese as your two side dishes to go with your meat. Or you could simplify things and just eat a great big garden salad that includes some grilled chicken or ham and perhaps an egg. Most of the ingredients in a garden salad are going to be very low carb as long as you stay away from the croutons. Just say no croutons, please. Or if you have to, pull them out of your salad one by one. I've been eating low-carb long enough to know about how many carbs in a meal are safe for me and to prevent major glucose spikes, but the truth is most of the time I don't bother to add up the carbs. From the beginning of the time I started testing my blood sugar, it quickly became apparent which foods jacked my glucose way up and which ones didn't. Once I found a meal approved by Mike, the blood sugar meter, I filed it away and went back to it frequently. So here, once again, was a case where there was no major surprise for me, except that my glucose was actually a little bit lower than I thought it would be at about an hour and 20 minutes after eating. I was, however, fairly certain there would be little spike, and I was right. How did I know this? Well, I knew it on the basis of hundreds, if not thousands, of blood sugar post-meal tests that I've been doing since 2002. Was this meal that I ate at Golden Corral a keto meal? Nah, probably not. In order to qualify as a keto meal, it would need to consist of about 70% fat, and I don't think it did. Some of you keto experts can figure out the exact percentage of fat in that meal and let us know in the comments. And to be honest, I rarely figure out fat percentages. I do lean toward getting fat in my meals. I love to add butter to meals. I eat the fattiest hamburger I can find, and I frequently have a cup of bulletproof coffee as my breakfast made with lots of butter and heavy cream. So I'm not at all afraid of fat, but I usually don't measure fat percentages. I've never felt the need to. And I guess that makes my diet somewhere between keto and low carb. Okay, that's it for now. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up so YouTube will recognize its value and rank it high in its suggested videos to diabetics. And if you haven't yet done so, consider subscribing and then click that little bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.